Hi guys, Yasas Kakalasirtate to another episode of Dimitra's Dishes. Today we're making mini donuts filled with chocolate hazelnut spread or Nutella, merenda, whatever you want to call it, whatever your favorite chocolate hazelnut spread is. They're going to be filled with that. They're going to be rich, pillowy, soft, delicious, and they're so easy to make. They're made with very basic ingredients. You can find these in every cafe in Greece, wherever you go to get your coffee. They have pastries in there, and there's always these little donuts. They also make them in bigger versions, but they're so much better when they're small because it's like the perfect ratio of Nutella and donut. They're filled, they're good, and I, you guys are just gonna love these. Let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start with one cup of whole milk, and you wanna make sure that it's lukewarm, not too hot, not too cold. A quarter cup of sugar, granulated sugar, that's 60 grams. And then two and a quarter teaspoons of active dried yeast. This is gonna help them rise. Now uh, we're gonna just make sure that the yeast is alive and well. If you see me use yeast before in many of my bread recipes, you always test it in this way. You just give it a nice mix and you let it sit for about eight minutes. As soon as you see a nice pillowy cloud form on the top, then you know your yeast is good. If yeast is not good, your donuts, your bread, whatever you're using in, whatever you're using it in will not rise. So if you don't see that, which I'll show you what it looks like in a few minutes, you're gonna have to throw it out and get some fresh yeast. It hardly ever goes bad, but when it does, don't skip this step because why waste all these ingredients? Now in this bowl over here, let's get the dry ingredients ready. Now for the dry ingredients, I have three cups of all-purpose flour. That's about 420 grams. To that, I'm gonna add a quarter teaspoon of salt, and I'm just gonna whisk it all up, and set it aside. Then we're gonna need some unsalted butter. This is four tablespoons, or two ounces. I'll put the gram measurements on the written recipe, and I'm just gonna pop this in the microwave with the little plastic or parchment wrapper on top so it doesn't splatter everywhere until it melts. The butter has melted. To that, I'm gonna add one to two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. One teaspoon is what you need, but I always put a little more. And then I have two eggs that are at room temperature. I'm just gonna beat this all together. Okay, so the yeast is active. It's only been, what, three or four minutes and it's starting to puff up a little bit. The longer you leave it there, the more puffy it's gonna get. But I know it's good because this is the third day in a row that I'm making these donuts and that, that batch of yeast is good. So now I'm gonna add the flour mixture. Okay, now I'm using my tabletop mixer because it makes life so much easier, but you can definitely knead this by hand. Keep in mind if you're kneading it by hand, it is going to be a sticky dough. So instead of adding lots of flour to it, keep your hands greased with olive oil so that way um, it'll make it easier to knead it and you don't add too much flour because if you add too much flour, it'll make them dry. Now I'm gonna add the egg and butter and vanilla mixture. And I'm gonna turn the mixer on low and let this knead for about eight minutes. Keep in mind, it's never gonna be, come together and make a ball. It's gonna still be sticky by the end, and I'll show you what, it mean, what I mean. Okay, as you can see, it is a very sticky dough, and that is what it's supposed to look like. If you keep adding flour, and if it's thicker than that, or well, how should I say, denser than that, um, it's, the donuts are not gonna be light and fluffy, and you want light and fluffy donuts, right? So now we're gonna transfer this dough so I've added a few uh, tablespoons of olive oil to the bottom of the bowl that the dough is going to go in. Make sure it's a bowl big enough to hold the dough because it's going to double in volume. And then just turn it around so that way it's you know evenly coated with the oil. This is going to help it rise. Put a piece of plastic wrap on top. And put this in the warmest part of your house for about one and a half hours until it's doubled in volume. So the dough has risen beautifully, it's doubled in volume. But before we you know, form the little donuts, you will need to have your work surface ready to go. So in a piping bag that's fitted with 
you know, star attachment. You don't have to have a star. Anything will do because you're not looking for a decoration. You just want it to pipe the chocolate in. Just fill the bag about halfway and leave it in the glass so that way that's ready for you. Now, the t uh, these donuts, once they're fried, they're dipped in this delicious cinnamon sugar. It's one cup of sugar and two teaspoons of ground cinnamon. If you're not a fan of cinnamon, you can just leave it out and use plain sugar. If you want to make it a little bit exotic, you could add some ground cardamom to this. Maybe a half a teaspoon of ground cardamom would make it really nice. Okay, so that's ready. I have a one and a half inch uh, cookie cutter. These could be one and a half inch or two inches. And keep in mind, they are going to puff up. I have this little skewer that's going to poke a hole inside of them to make room for the filling. If you don't have this, you could just use, you could simply use a knife, some flour that we're going to dust over our work surface, two baking trays that are both lined with parchment paper, and you're going to need a, a, dr a drying rack, cooling rack. That's going to help them cool faster without getting soggy on the bottom. That's pretty much it. Nothing fancy. These are all basic things that you have in the kitchen. So now I'm just going to dust some all-purpose flour over the board because, like we said, this is a sticky dough. Put a little bit of flour on top. And if you want to use a rolling pin, you can, but as you see, this just rolls out really easily with your hands. You can just press it out. It should be about a half inch thick. The dough is so nice and soft. These are going to be light, delicious donuts. Now I'm going to cut these into rounds, but you, if you have a square cookie cutter, that's fine too. Okay, so now one thing about these, you should cut as close as you can to each other because the thing about um, dough is once you, uh, once you have these little scraps, it's kind of hard for them to stick back together to roll them out. You can roll them out one more time, but the more you roll them out, the tougher the dough is going to get. So try to go close together. And as you cut them, keep putting them on the tray that's lined with parchment paper. Now you see all these scraps that are left over. You can just, if you want to, you can just fry them just as is, but I'm gonna try and get a few more out of this. This is probably gonna be the last time that I can roll it out. The more you roll it out, the tougher it is. I mean, the more you gather them up and you work the dough and kind of squish them all back together, the harder it is for, for them to roll out, to spread out, even though it is working right now. But the, the dough does get a little tougher, you'll see. I'm just going to leave these little pieces as is. I'm not going to bother rolling it back out. Maybe I'll do little rounds like this and then I'll dip them in cinnamon sugar for the kids. So you want to cover them with some clean kitchen towels very loosely. Um, let them sit for about 20-30 minutes so they can puff up a little bit more. I'm going to clean up. I have some uh, light olive oil heating up over medium heat. You want it to get to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a good idea to have um, a thermometer, a little candy thermometer handy, so that way you can really measure the temperature of the oil. Because the thing about it is whenever you're frying donuts, if the temperature is too low, they're going to absorb the oil and they're going to be soggy and greasy, and you don't want that. And if the temperature is too high, what happens is it burns them on the outside, and sometimes they're left raw on the inside or they get way too brown on the outside. So 350, 355 is the perfect temperature and it's very inexpensive. I'll post the link on the blog post and on, on underneath the video so you can get one if you don't already have one. I'm going to clean up and then we're going to be ready to fry them. Okay, so the oil has reached its temperature. It's actually a little hot, so the first ones are probably going to be a little browner than I like. But go ahead and put them in and they're going to cook for about three minutes total. Once they get nice and golden on one side, go ahead and flip them over until they're golden all around and nice and puffy. 
Another thing is don't put too many in at the same time, otherwise the oil's temperature drops and then they're gonna be greasy and soggy and you don't want that. Now if you want, I did say that I'm using a light olive oil. The light olive oil that I'm using is not the really good quality, extra virgin, cold press olive oil that you use for salads. You don't wanna use um, a rich tasting oil because you want the donut flavor to stand out. You don't want them to taste like olive oil. This is one that I find at my local Costco. I think it might even be refined, but it's really light in color. I kind of stay away from canola oil and all of those, but if, you're, if you don't have any of this, you can use whatever frying oil that you like, a, a vegetable oil that doesn't have a lot of flavor. They're nice and golden. Now you wanna have your sugar nearby, your cinnamon sugar nearby, and then the cooling rack on top of a, a baking tray, and you'll see why. Okay, so I'm gonna take them out a few at a time and just shake off that oil. If you want to, you could also have a tray that's uh, lined with um, paper towels to catch the excess oil, but you don't really need it. Then I'm just gonna put them in the cinnamon sugar right away while they're nice and hot so that way that sugar can stick. And either using a spoon or your hands, go ahead and toss them in that cinnamon sugar and then we're gonna keep frying and doing the same thing until all of the donuts are fried. So then just go ahead and once you're done frying them, using the skewer, poke it whole on the side so that way the tip can go in easily and they can fill up with the Nutella very easily and they can get lots in there. Then go ahead and carefully fill each one. Once, while you're filling them, you're gonna feel that they're gonna puff up a little bit because the filling is going in there and it's spreading out. And the best part of making homemade donuts is that they're always more generously filled with filling than if you get them at the store. Sometimes you go to the store to even a bakery and you take a bite and there's just like a little tiny dot of filling in the center. I hate it when that happens. So I always fill mine generously. Look at how beautiful they look. The house smells amazing. Something about cinnamon sugar and dough, fried dough especially, makes me extra hungry. I'm gonna make some Greek coffee but before I do. Let me show you how soft they are. When I tear it apart, look at how much filling is in that. Of course, I use chocolate hazelnut spread, but you can use your favorite chocolate, whatever you want in there. You can put ganache in there if you want something more rich. If you uh, prefer something creamy, you could put pastry cream in there. If you want a jelly, you can put jelly or preserves in there. You are the boss of your kitchen. I was thinking that these would make a delicious birthday dessert rather than birthday cake. It's inexpensive, easy to make, and feeds a crowd. I have 40 little donuts in here. Perfect. Time to take a bite. Oh my God. Somebody better come over and help me finish these because these can do some serious damage. So light, so fluffy. The dough is airy. The filling is, of course, chocolate hazelnut spread is delicious. Put it on anything, give it to me. <laughs> but especially in these donuts, the exact measurements are, in, are on the website, DemetriusDishes.com. Head on over there to print it. Let me know if you make them, how they turned out in the comment section down below. And I'll see you back here next time with another delicious recipe. Yes, yes.